Good evening, everyone, and welcome to another Take 10, live right here on the International College of Dentists USA section Facebook page. I am your host of uh, social media, Dr. Patel. You've seen me before. And today we've got a very special guest all the way from California, the California Dental Association President, Dr. Judy Tippett White. Thank you for being here with us. Thank you for having me. So I just want to let everyone know how this kind of runs. I know we're, we're all sort of pros after 14 or 16 months of this. Um, this is being streamed live right now on our National College of Dentists USA section Facebook page, um, and it will remain there even after we go off air. Additionally, all of these interviews are archived on the ICD USA section website under the events tab on the top. If you click that, you can see a drop down that has links to all of the interviews that we do. I will be leaving some time at the end for questions. Um, and if you think of anything you'd like to ask our guest, feel free to leave that in the comment section below. We also like to know who's watching us and we like to say hello. So if you are, go ahead and say hi so I can acknowledge that you're here. I'm gonna tell everyone a little bit about you and then we are going to get started. So you began your journey into the dental field as an assistant, which is really cool and got all sorts of training on the job that probably really, really helped along the way. Um, and you graduated from UOP in 1986, and you were the first woman valedictorian in the history of the school, which is so awesome. And you've practiced general dentistry in Stockton, California for the last 35 years. Um, as a fresh-faced dental school graduate, you became active in your local dental society, and you were the first woman president there as well. And you were totally captivated by the sense of belonging to such an amazing organization that had a common goal of working to support and improve our profession through organized dentistry. I love that. Um, you also were on the CDA committee on the new dentist, and you were on the council on membership. And at the ADA level, a member of the Council on Dental Practice, the chair of the ADA delegation. And that was the path uh, that kind of started you to where you are now as the president of the California Dental Association. Mm -hmm. um, you and your husband, Steve, have been married for 38 years and you have three sons, a Naval Special Forces son, a quantum physicist and a chemical engineer um, who all live outside of California. And that means you get to travel pre-pandemic and mm -hmm. three grandchildren. You love cooking and you've been part of a gourmet cooking group since 1999. That's awesome. <laughs> and love gardening and hiking, camping and fishing and hope that upon retirement, you would like to travel to all of the national parks in the USA. There's a lot of them, I think. There are. <laughs> so um, we're going to roll right into it. And everyone watching, remember, please say hello. And if you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section below. It's so great to have you with us here tonight. How is the dental community in your area right now? Well, you know, the dental community in California is really beginning to show signs of recovery. Um, as the vaccines are administered, patients are beginning to feel more comfortable getting out and about and coming back in for their dental work. Um, this week, California is finally reopening, and I think that's really going to help reassure patients and help them return to reestablish dental care. Um, PPE, although still costly, is much easier for us to acquire, as most of you know, and so people aren't limiting um, patient contact due to supply insecurities. Um, so that's been helpful, too. We're seeing our schedules fill back up. I'd say that most practices are about to 85% of their pre-pandemic production. Um, Many are still seeing fewer patients trying to limit patient interactions within the office. Um, and of course, you know, the additional time for infection control measures, it takes a little bit longer to flip your rooms over and to let them sit and so forth. So, and you know, that takes longer for each point of patient care. So I think it's gonna be a while before everybody's really back up to their, you know, 100% speed. Um, I also have heard of a lot of the associates who had lost their positions um, due to the pandemic when offices were closed and they're still a little slow to regain employment. Um, I'm hoping that with the economy improving, patients returning for care, that, um, you know, the offices and, and uh, the dentists are going to feel a little bit more optimistic and have um, the, the need to bring it, their associates back on board or positions for the associates and the new graduates. But things are really beginning to look up. It's, it's much, much brighter like it is everywhere in the United States. It is. And thank, thank God for that. We've got a couple of people saying hello. Dr. Risa Martin from Texas. Julio, of course, says hello. And Janice Moriarty from Boston. Thanks hello. for joining us all. I had a son who lived in Texas for six years. 
<laughs> so you have a really intriguing history. We learned a little bit about it when I when I read your bio. What exactly was it that motivated you to become a dentist while you were a dental assistant? Well, I actually started my journey in this whole field of dentistry as a senior in high school. I went to a high school that offered a program called Senior Seminar, and it was really an exploratory internship as to what did you want to do for your career? I kind of had no idea. And I had had orthodontia and it fascinated me. And I thought, well, maybe I wanted to be a dental assistant. So my family dentist helped me set up this little internship program. And I worked in various dental offices, um, oral surgeon, pedo. I worked for two weeks out at our big county clinic that served the inmates. That was quite um, interesting. And um, I really, really, really liked this. So the pedo practice, especially, I always loved being with kids. And so I offered to the dentist who um, was at the practice and said, you know, I'd love to learn more. Can I come volunteer this summer and, um, you know, just see what it's all about. So right after I graduated from high school, he called and he said, I have an associate coming on board and I need a dental assistant for him. He'll be seeing patients on Wednesdays and Saturdays and we'll train you. Are you interested? I said, sure. So I took my x-ray license and they trained me on the job. And um, the more I learned, the more I loved it. And, you know, I realized that dentistry really was my passion. And in a conversation with the doctor that I work directly with, he says, so this is not to be little assistance. He goes, you know, you've just got way more energy, way more knowledge and way more drive. And think about hygiene school. He says, or better yet, you know, UOP's dental program is three years. You could go there and be a dentist. And I thought, hmm, why not? It's exactly what I did. So what I really needed was just somebody that gave me a push and saw my potential, um, you know, to send me down that path to dental school. And so from there, as I said, I went to Davis and I'd come back and work for them during my breaks in the summer. And um, long story short, my practice is actually across the hall from the pediatric office that I started in. That's such a great story. I came full circle. <laughs> Life really does sometimes. That's awesome. It does. Yeah, yeah. So again, um, it was having a mentor, you know, and somebody that, you know, really helped me and, and my family dentist continued in that also. And, you know, when I was, had finished with my undergrad, I had about six months before I started dental school. And so I was working with him and, you know, he'd be doing an extraction. He says, okay, put your hand on the forcep. You feel this, you know, and I wasn't doing it, but he was really trying to teach me. And like you said, it was such an advantage going to dental school with the background that I had. Yeah. Um, it just, you know, I knew the instruments, I knew protocols. It, it really did help make things easier for me. Yeah, that must have been an awesome help. And, you know, you said something really important that I want to restate the importance and the power of mentorship and Absolutely. In, in kind of all ways in our life. I think sometimes they're employers, sometimes they're parents, sometimes they're friends. Um, you know, sometimes they're, they're, they come kind of at the most unlikely times and the most mm -hmm. unlikely packages, but um, the power of mentorship and really, and really forming that bond um, definitely can't be understated. So thank you for that. Um, yeah certainly have a passion for organized dentistry and leadership. Uh, what inspired you towards leadership in the dental organizations that you have been a part of and that you are part of? Well, you know, I've certainly had experience in leadership in a lot of organizations, not just CDA, our local component. Um, I was president of the Alumni Association for UOP. And I think that, you know, my passion for leadership really comes from, you know, the common goal of wanting to work and support our profession. And, um, you know, to do that, you have to be committed. And, if we don't do it, who will? We have to be the vo voice for our pr profession, which is why I've taken the time away from my practice and my family to do that. Um, it, we can't live our lives for ourselves. We have to make our lives richer and more fuller by giving of ourselves. And I truly felt that you know, giving to myself, to my profession, to my community, to my church, to my family was just really important to who I am as a person, my core values. And, you know, it's up to us as the dental profession to guide our policymakers, um, to guide the dental benefit plan industry, our governing boards, regulatory, um, establishing the protocols and the procedures for our practices that are practical, that protect our patients and the team, and they're reasonable. And it, this is really never more evident than during the past year of COVID. And you know, so that that's what my drive is. Is you know, I just feel very strongly that um, it's up to us to make our profession better and to protect the things that we need to in our profession. Definitely. I love that. And, and I, I think, again, one of the recurrent themes over, you know, 14, I guess maybe we're at almost at 16 months of these interviews that I've been doing is um, the 
that everyone that comes on with me, no matter where they're at in their career, whether they're just starting out or retired, whether they kind of chose a different path. I had um, Kathy O with me on it at one point is, is that kind of sense of paying blessings forward. Um, Absolutely. In, and it comes from within and it's just so motivating mm -hmm. and wonderful to see that coming out in all sorts of different ways and people all over the country um, and that that's kind of what we're all united in. So, so that was really great uh, to hear from you as well. Thank you. What has your year been like so far as the president of the California Dental Association? <laughs> It's been wild, um, but a great year. You know, I'm, I'm almost halfway through the, the year and um, it, it's unbelievable how fast it's gone. Um, my term started off with the bang on January 4th, the first official day of my presidency, the first day back to work after the holidays. And this is the day that the Department of Consumer Affairs in California decided to announce our emergency authorization that dentists could provide vaccines. And about noon, my phone started blowing up. And I'm with patients, so I'm not checking my phone all the time. And my treatment coordinator come back and she says, Dr. Tippett, um, somebody from CDA is on the phone and they really need to talk to you. <laughs> and so um, you know, they're trying to coordinate interviews um, with all the news stations to, you know, how are we responding to this and are we qualified to give vaccines and, you know, the whole nine yards. And so after about two days, poor Kendra came to me. I was in my office and she leaned against the wall and put her head there. She says, would be like this all year? And I said, no, I promise it's going to slow down. Um, but anyway, you know, we immediately went to work to help our members, one, get our members to find vaccines. Um, you know, they were really concerned about trying to be vaccinated, um, of course, to help navigate the training courses we were going to need to take and um, promote that and help our members be able to figure out how they could help our communities and provide vaccines. Um, but first off, we had to get our own members vaccinated. Um, but uh, so that was kind of the, the start. So it was a wild ride for the first few weeks, but things have started to slow down. Um, we're of course continuing to address the COVID-19 issues um, and practice support and guidance for our members. But as an organization, we're getting back on track with th some things that got pushed aside because of COVID. Um, but in every decision that we're making, we're still continued to focus on practice support for our members, education, advocacy, communication, and practice protection through TDIC, our insurance company. Um, and last year, you know, we established a lot of these principles and really began focusing on these core services, all being sensitive to the value of their dues, daughter, dues dollar and um, the services that we were pro providing for them. Um, this past year, we just held our second really successful virtual presents, our um, continuing education and exhibitors. And we actually had stronger attendance at the virtual meeting than we've had from some dentists at our in-person meetings, although everybody really misses being together. Um, one of the things that I'm really gratif uh, gratified by is our volunteer engagement. Over the past year, we've had no less than five work groups working together to produce for um, our organization, whether it be COVID-19, economic recovery, um, practice support, we're looking at education resources, um, and also our board. Our board went from meeting quarterly to meeting monthly last year. And so we are now holding monthly board meetings. And it's not about having more meetings. It's about making sure that we're adapting to our circumstances and providing um, timely board engagement with clear communication and consistency to our board members. We have um, a great executive committee team that supports me. Um, kind of a fun fact that three of us on the executive committee are all from the class of 1986 at UOP. Um, Finney is an, a past president and she's now our speaker of our house and Arianne Tyle is our president elect who um, is succeeding me next year. And on our executive committee, we actually have five women out of the nine. So it's um, showing the really the changing face of dentistry. Um, and we also have an incredible CDA staff. Um, we're working really hard to be optimistic, um, to collaborate, to find solutions to the challenges that we're facing. And um, my theme for this year is breaking down barriers and building bridges. So you know, trying to break down the barriers um, by building relationships based on trust, open and transparent communication with our members, legislatures, and our communities. And I think it's really important that our members and our leaders know that at CDA, it's a place for engagement and that their voices are important and heard. And I think we're going to continue to grow and be successful and climb out of this pandemic very well and very strong. Um, and we're moving forward for the benefit of our members because we have a really shared purpose. We have committed board members and, and members of the organization. 
and incredible expertise among our 27,000 members. Yeah, the CDA does a tremendous job. And I love, of course, as a, as a woman in a leadership position in dentistry, I love um, hearing that the board is, is so inclusive, which is, it was really great. Um, you know, I, I love to end these with just with this question. And I, like I said, I ask it of everyone because I feel that this is one of the only platforms that some of our newer members and, and new dentists and dental students and residents get to hear from such a wide variety of people. And so my question for you uh, in conclusion is, are there any words of wisdom that you would like to share with new graduates coming out into the dental world? Absolutely. I'd say the first thing that I would say to our new grads is remember how you got into dental school. You excelled academically, you're empathetic, and you really have the desire to um, help, help people achieve optimal oral health. And your skill set outshined hundreds of other applicants. And now you're graduates moving into this fabulous pr pr profession with your doctorate. Um, you worked harder than you ever thought possible. You sacrificed time with your family and friends. Some of you were student leaders in your class. And no matter how hard the road, you are capable of achieving all your dreams. Um, your class experienced nothing like any of us with the pandemic. And um, many of you may not feel you're as well prepared as some of the other classes pre-pandemic, but you're gonna be fine. You're gonna be just fine. Um, there's so many educational opportunities out there that's gonna help you develop your clinical and fine tune your skills. And um, remember, we were all new grads at one time and you know we're here to support you in your career journey. Find a mentor. I think that's really, really helpful. Be confident as a new leader and a dentist and say yes when you're asked to get involved. Um, you will learn and grow so much as a leader in whether it be your um, local component, your state association, on another board, um, a rotary, a service organization within your church, just something that's gonna help you develop your leadership skills because those will transition to your practice and make your practice more successful also. And remember to give back to dentistry because you're the future of our profession. And the other thing is to always, always do what's right for the patient and follow the dental code of ethics. Um, recommend care that's based on what's best for the patient, not what's gonna bring in more revenue. And that oath you took when you got your white coat is, needs to be carried on forever in your hearts. And I mean forever in your hearts. One of my favorite quotes is by Henry David Thoreau. And it's, if, if one advances confidently in the direction of their dreams and endeavors to live a life they've imagined, they'll meet with success unexpected in common hour. I shared that with my graduates when I gave my um, commencement address. And so I just like to say to the new grads, follow your dreams and be confident in your journey. Don't be afraid of uncertainty or taking risks. Instead, embrace them because that's gonna make your journey have opportunities for growth and success. So those are my words of wisdom. Thank you so much. And I really, I love that. That, that was so meaningful and I think important that especially in this time where everything was so uncertain, Mm -hmm. We were really all kind of in it together and it will be okay. And there are amazing yep. educational opportunities on the other side of things and, and mentors and people that are really willing to kind of walk the path next to you, um, no matter kind of where you're at in your journey. So thank you for that. I also want to thank you for being our special guest and taking the time to be on with me tonight. I hope to see you uh, in a couple months here at uh, the ADA in Vegas, along with many of the people that are probably going to be watching this. So thank you for that. Um, we are going to, of course, continue to do these uh, programs all the way through. So our next program has been moved up because of July 4th. So it's going to be on June 30th and that's at eight o'clock and we're gonna have Dr. Ronald Fritz. Dr. Fritz is the 2018 ICD Distinguished Humanitarian Award recipient and one of our volunteer seminar speakers who has volunteered on missions for more than 50 years. And my co-host for the evening will be Risa Martin. As usual, remember to look out for uh, future dates and guests on the Facebook page, in your e-blasts, and usa-icd.org. Remember to go to the events tab at the top and click the drop-down list and you will see all the information there. I want to thank Dr. Tippett White again for being our special guest this evening, all the way from the California Dental Association. And we will see you here in just a few more weeks. I hope everyone has a good night. Great. Thank you so much for having me. Have a great night.